Professor Chartrand, and I'm joined by artist Don Roselle. We're here to talk about uh, you, Don, you and your work you. on our continued uh, Shanty Spotlight series. I'm so happy that you're going to be joining us back at the Artist Shanties this season. You've been there a few years, and I've yeah. watched your work evolve and <laughs> go in all sorts of directions. So I know our viewers will be so pleased to hear a little bit about you in the process and then see you down at the Shanties. Sure. Um, and other ways, we will let them know how else they can get in touch with you um, sure. as well. But let's just briefly talk about your background okay. and how you grew up. You mentioned about um, growing up in a household where your mom did just about everything. Let's talk she about did. that. She did. She was an artist in her own right, and um, or she is an artist in her own right. She is quite creative. She does painting, sewing, all kinds of things. And when we were growing up, we didn't have a lot, which most people don't on the Cape when they're younger. And she never made that an issue. It was a creative way to change things. And so she instilled that creative thinking in me, and I think it's carried me quite far. Absolutely. You went to school for design as well? That, that was the first direction you, you went in? Yeah. I went to Mount Ida uh, Chamberlain School of Design right in Boston for two years for fashion design. And it was basically the jumping point for my creative um, journey and I've continued to sew but I found my passion in the jewelry. Wonderful and you said you dabbled a little in photography too so you've explored I did. that and I'm sure <laughs> it all comes back. I mean you take, it does, yeah. you absolutely take gorgeous pictures Thank of your you. work <laughs> <laughs> and um, so you know you never you never lose those skills or you, you think at the time maybe it's not what you want but then you see where it comes back full circle. Absolutely and I feel that um, doing many different things really helps to inspire you to continue to um, never be stale in the art sure. that you really love. So. so let's talk about the jewelry sure. and I, I want to pick up this piece because a lot we this were year? talking about recycled materials yeah. and, and let's talk about your work, your process, you have some sketches okay. and you take us through it. Sure, um, so one of my lines which I absolutely love making is all recycled copper and I start with electrical wire that I strip down and or plumbing pipe and even I sometimes use um, sheet metal that was originally um, roofing tiles. And I take them and I clean them all up and then I sometimes I will sketch or I will just kind of let the piece talk to me and I will completely re-transform it into something different. Um, like these pieces here, these were all plumbing pipe at one time. <laughs> and <laughs> I cut them and reshaped them and um, added my own little flair to them. And uh, I did the same with this here. This is actually a combination of the electrical wire and the plumbing pipe together. So um, it completely started as an accident. My husband had done some home projects and had extra pipe and wire and asked if I could do something with it. And, and that was just wow. an opportunity for me to try something different. And I completely fell in love with it. So. And you mentioned before, so sometimes you sketch, you have mm -hmm. an idea of what you want, and then sometimes these, these pieces speak to you. Yes. I will sometimes sit down if I'm having a bit of a, a mental block and sort of doodle and let, let that help to, to free my, um, my creative part of my mind. And other times I find that uh, it's actually easier for me to just go for it and let my hands tell me what to do and, and based on the stone or piece that I want to create, I let it kind of just tell me what direction to move into. Sure, and yeah. you do the wire wrapping. I yes. know that that's something that you really love. And talk a little bit about that. Sure, um, what I do is I basically take the wire and I create every single component that you see, including the ear wires. Um, I'm a true believer in making it from top to bottom when I can. Um, if I have pieces that are old and want to recycle them, I will try and take them apart as far as I can before I start on it. Um, but it's just a matter of using, my main tools are three different tools and it's just two, two types of pliers and a pair of cutters. So it's very basic. Um, of course I can use some extremely technical pieces but I prefer to use my hands as much as possible. And a piece, it just speaks to you when it's done? I mean, is there a lot of yeah, time spent? Yeah. <laughs> or does some come off very quickly? I yes, would absolutely. And some pieces w are much quicker to make than others, and that's simply because it may have less um, wrapping to it. Um, others take a couple days, 
but my favorite thing about Wire is you can see your progress um, as you're going. So even if it takes a few days to do, you can see that you're making progress. And I really enjoy that because I'm a very impatient person <laughs> when it comes to creating. <laughs> so. And this is just one of several lines that you said you have. What, yes. Tell us briefly about a few of the other types of uh, lines you have. Okay, um, I carry um, sterling silver as well as um, brass and gold filled pieces. Um, and those, some of them are made by um, using all new materials, um, whereas this line is all recycled pieces. And um, I try to have a little of everything. Sure. But uh, my main, my main um, line is the copper. Right. And this, now this was um, where you said also using, you said it was a stone from another piece of jewelry yes. that you found. Those which I were, love. Um, that one was actually made from a pair of old antique um, earrings. And it was, it's a globe crystal, which is the ones that are round all the way except for one flat spot on the back. And I basically unglued that piece and took it all apart. And then I created this it. ring. I love it. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> love it. And you do some teaching as well. I know you teach in, in Mashpee at the Art Bar there yeah. and yeah. down in... Uh, at Nauset Middle, Middle, Middle School. Yep, I do the adult education yeah, which program. Is, which is fabulous classes and workshops and we hope yeah. to have you at the Geyer Barn perhaps in the fall or yeah, winter. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> but let's let our viewers know where they can find more information about you sure. at, at your specific website. Okay, um, my website is uh, dawnrosell.com which is my name, and it's D-A-W-N-R-O-S-E-L-L. -L. And um, they can also find me on Facebook under uh, Dawn Roselle Designs. Uh, that's where I am. That's <laughs> wonderful, Dawn. And you can also find all the information about Dawn and the other artists participating in the Shanty program right at highartsdistrict.com as well as artsbarnstable.com to get all the happenings, Dawn, you know, in the right, summertime yeah. especially. <laughs> things happen year-round here in the town, but you can Absolutely. find out all the activities and fun things going on. So thank you so much oh, again for coming in, Dawn, <laughs> for Dawn Roselle. I'm Melissa Chartrand wishing you an artful day.